sex was extremely painful and not in the good way. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What's up guys? I was planning on not filming a video today and just going straight into streaming, but this is gonna be a really quick one. I just wanted to address the whole breast implant illness thing. It is now Tuesday. You guys will probably be seeing this next Monday or Friday. I'm not sure which, but Philip DeFranco just posted a video. One of those deep dives where like he has his colleagues or something look into something more deeply and talk about it. And this time he was talking about breast implant illness. A lot of you guys have been asking me because apparently I'm the resident really honest about being a fake titty bitch club girl or whatever. And some of you were worried about me. Some of you were like, haha, gotcha. Implants are terrible. And others just were really curious about what I thought about it. I've mentioned this previously many times, but I am a skeptic of whether or not breast implant illness is even a thing, or if it's a conglomeration of other things misdiagnosed into, oh, there's something wrong with your boobs or your breast implants. I do, however, believe there is some credence to the whole like textured implants give you a higher risk of breast cancer or a certain type of cancer. I forget what it's called. But to preface this before we go into why I feel this way and my thoughts on it, I wanted to let you guys know responsibly that this is not going to be a video to try to change your mind. It's just to offer you a different perspective. I'm not going to be as in depth with the statistics and the doctors and other examples and stuff as Philip DeFranco was. I just think that a lot of people are taking this as kind of fact and I want to just propose an alternative hypothesis, one based on my own anecdotal evidence. These girls here that have implant illness may actually have implant illness. They may actually have this cancer from having breast implants. I have no idea. This is not to say that these girls are lying or that they are wrong or that the doctors are wrong or that the statistics are for sure misinterpreted. This is just my opinion. So please, of course, as always, I encourage you to do your own research. Don't take me or even Philip DeFranco and his research at face value as fact. With that being said, I had the exact same symptoms as someone who has breast implant illness for years. I don't know if you guys remember, but back in 2015, 2016, it got really bad where I was to the point where I was going to neurologists to try to find out what was wrong with me. I checked out everything I possibly could because I was having fatigue, headaches, stomach aches, nausea that were, it was like insane. I would wake up in the morning feeling like a normal person. And by the end of the day, it was debilitating to the point where I couldn't even work longer than like five hours. I couldn't do anything longer than five hours. I would lay on the couch, try to play video games. And it was so uncomfortable for me that I would have to go to bed early. I tried everything. I was to the point where I thought I might have Lyme disease, which is kind of hard to diagnose. I had a friend who had that problem and she was fatigued and some days she was horrible, some days she wasn't. And that's kind of how I felt. And during this time of me trying to diagnose what was going on with me by researching, going to different doctors and stuff, paying way too much money to do so, I was being told by a lot of people in the comment section that it's probably breast implant illness. At which point I was willing to do anything else before I took out my implants on a hunch. So fast forward to when I had to move from Seattle to Las Vegas. I was really busy. I didn't have any time to do anything else. I barely had time to work. I had to get a bunch of videos ready beforehand. So I was swamped and I just kind of stopped taking my birth control. About a month into me being in Vegas, I was like, wait, I'm not having these symptoms anymore at all. And I've just kind of stopped taking my birth control. Lo and behold, it was because of hormonal changes in my birth control. Now this wasn't diagnosed completely by a doctor, but literally the moment I stopped taking birth control about a week later. And from then on, I just improved greatly. And now I am a normal human being with no problems. It didn't make any sense to me for people to say that it was breast implant illness in the first place since I had been having these problems since I was like 14, 15, way before I got my breast implants. And I had had my breast implants now for over 10 years, I think. Two different sets, not because of complications, because I wanted to upgrade to a better feeling silicone. And I'm symptom free and I've never had any problems with them regarding my health. Of course, as the Philip DeFranco video says, not everyone elicits these signs. I'm just saying that there's probably a strong correlation between girls who get breast implants and girls who are on birth control because most girls I would assume are on some form of birth control, especially younger women, women in their 20s and 30s, or even in their late teens. And I know many women who don't know if they have Lyme disease, who don't know what's going on with them, who don't have breast implants, who are probably going through the same thing. My first wake up call to how I feel that 
hormonal birth control is not safe and not good long term for you was when I got my Mirena IUD. Now Mirena has a very very low doses of hormones. It's not copper, it's not made of some kind of weird metal that offsets you in some way. It has a very low dose of I think progesterone and that's pretty much it. And it destroyed me while I had it in. I had it in for a few months and in like a month span I had gained like 30-40 pounds. I was sluggish all the time. I felt like shit. All of my symptoms that I talked about earlier were doubled if not tripled. Sex was extremely painful and not in the good way. I was having spotting even though I wasn't supposed to have any period at all. And the only link between when I started having these headaches and this nausea on a daily basis when I was in my like late teens was the fact that I was on birth control that entire time. I first got on birth control when I was 14 or 15 under the guise that I wanted to have better skin because I had kind of bad skin and also because I was sleeping with one of my boyfriends at a younger age and I wanted to make sure that I was being responsible and didn't get pregnant. So my mom thought that it was for my skin and it was kind of but it was just so that my long-term boyfriend and I could have sex without a condom and not get pregnant. For those of you wondering what I do now I just pull out not responsible I understand but as I am 99.9% .9 of the time always with the same partner he doesn't get me pregnant somehow he's really good at pulling out I don't know and if I have sex with someone else I use a condom I find that this is healthier and a better alternative than not having sex or slowly dying because I'm tricking my body into thinking that I am pregnant all the time. And it's funny because in the comments section, some other girl, like just scrolling through for like five seconds, I found some other girl on the Philip DeFranco video, which I will post here if I can find it again, saying that it was her copper IUD. When I went in to get my Mirena IUD, I was told by the girl at Planned Parenthood that it has almost no side effects for anyone ever. She made me feel so comfortable with getting this thing that there would be no problems, I would have no period, and I would absolutely love it like every other woman that she's ever talked to in the clinic. So I was like, there's no way that my Mirena is causing this problem. There's no way that it's getting worse because of my Mirena. I start doing a little bit of Googling and then I find out that there are so many girls who are told that this has no side effects, that it's good for you, that it doesn't fuck you up at all, who had very similar experiences to mine or even very different ones, but very horrendous ones nonetheless. Birth control is pretty new of a thing. And I don't really trust the FDA or any studies to really tell me what's safe without a very gigantic sample size from a bunch of different companies companies, companies that do not profit like the FDA and like the drug companies do to tell me what's safe and what's not safe. And I personally do not believe that being constantly told by hormones that your body is in the state of being pregnant so that you don't actually get pregnant is probably not healthy long term, at least not for some girls, which could presumably be the case for some girls with implants. But I do think, and this is just my personal hypothesis, that a lot of these breast implant illnesses can be explained by long term use usage of birth control. So while there may be some people who just don't react well to silicone or the certain silicone of some companies fucking with you, and again, I do agree that textured implants on the outside are a no-go, don't do that. My surgeon even believes that that's not good and he wasn't putting them in people's bodies back when I got my first breast implants, even though it was legal and used more widely, I believe. I know one surgeon that I had a consultation with said that I should get the textured ones so they don't flip around inside my body or something, but it makes perfect sense that the scar tissue is gonna build up on something that's not perfect perfectly smooth. Anyway, the surgeon that I actually went with doesn't like textured implants and does not believe in the breast implant sickness meme. Also, to refute anyone saying that, oh, they didn't get properly warned about breast implants, I had to sign the FDA agreement thing. I had to sign that I know that I'm supposed to get MRIs every five years while I have silicone implants just in case. And I also signed that there's some kind of correlation that they wanted to let me know about or whatever. So I was properly informed. My best guess is that if anyone wasn't properly informed, they went to a bad surgeon or they weren't paying attention. This is not me advocating for getting breast implants. This is not me advocating for taking them out. Do whatever the fuck you want. Just make sure you do your own research. I just think it's irresponsible to not talk about things like this that I think have some kind of correlation. And again, my anecdote is not fact. It's just a one-off, but it is proof that not 100% of these kinds of illnesses are related to breast implants if the girl has breast implants. So back to the whole Marina thing, as soon as I started doing the research and realizing there were so many fucking girls having this this problem. I got that shit taken out. I instantly dropped like 15 pounds. I'm still not back to where I was because some of it is food addiction and poor food choices. But a lot of it was just my hormones being completely out of whack because I'm constantly tricking my body into thinking it's something that it's not. So I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from and listen to my point of view. I'm still on the fence whether or not breast implant illness is even a thing. And I would caution against listening to the FDA about anything because they are probably going to be pressured by big pharma, for instance, ephedrine and things 
things like steroids are not as unsafe as the media would lead you to believe, yet they're banned for pretty much no reason. And here, even in the Philip DeFranco video, you have evidence that they allow things to be FDA approved, even if there's some questionableness about it. Question everything, do your own research, make your own life choices and stick to them, and share your experiences. Because your one experience leads to everyone else having more knowledge, and knowledge is power. This is personally just my experience. I've had silicone implants for about three years now, since 2016, and I've had no problems with them whatsoever in terms of illness. Before that, I had saline implants with the little fill port thing, and when they got taken out after eight years of use, I didn't have any of the mold or anything, nothing was deflated, I didn't have any problems. The silicone implants that I have now are silicone cohesive gel. They're not gummy bear. They're not as sticky silicone, but it is kind of similar. It's not the kind of silicone implant that if you puncture it, it'll just leak silicone. I can't remember exactly the brand. I think it might be one of the ones mentioned in the Philip DeFranco video. I know my previous ones were Mentor Spectrums and Mentor was mentioned. And as a last final note, I am all for people doing videos like this. I am all for further research. I am all for skepticism in whether or not breast implants are safe. I am all for finding out all of the ingredients in the silicone used in the implants because as I said knowledge is power and I am a little bit biased towards liking my implants and disliking fat transfer mainly because fat transfer has a very high rejection rate not in that it's going to be rejected by your body but it just gets mostly swallowed up by your body and recycled so it's really hard to get like fat injections into your ass or into your tits and actually have a good result that isn't just very slight so it's like a lot to go through for maybe not that great of a result with ass I prefer fat injections even though I wouldn't do it and I would hate to do it because I feel like the technology is still not that great. But with boobs, I'm definitely an implant girl, as you can tell. I hope you guys enjoyed this, like the video and subscribe to the channel. It was really impromptu. I just wanted to let you guys know what I think personally, because I think that a lot of people just take anyone using any kind of statistics, even with the wrong context around it as just blind faith fact, where there are a lot of contexts in which you can put some numbers to where it's very clear that correlation is not causation. I will see you guys in the next video. If you want to check out my links, links will be down in the description. Also, this is my first video back as blonde, I just realized, and I'm trying to like naturally dry my hair. Also, I got my main Instagram back. Oh, you can follow me at Instagram.com slash Tara Babcock once again and Instagram.com slash Tara Babcock games If you're having a problem with people wrongfully taking down your Instagram Please DM me somewhere and I'll give you the information on how I got it back. It is a lawyer thing It does cost money, but whew, it's so nice to be back and it's nice to know that it was wrongful It's funny because the way that I found out I got it back was cold actually texted me and cold was like you got your Instagram back And that was because he got an email that said thank you for reporting that this person's Instagram was down It was taken down because of many reports. We're sorry about that. And that was three months after he sent the email, of course. But here we have it. We're back in business. So don't forget to follow me on both. I also have Babcock in game on Instagram, which is where I post clips from my Twitch and also just aesthetic game images that I take from the in game game picture thingy. I love you. Thanks for watching. Bye. I don't know what that was. Save the titties. But let's do it responsibly and smartly. Okay. No girls need to be taking out their titties willy nilly. At least not yet.